A recent study by researcher Stephanie Edgerly says people are turning off the news, a syndrome called news avoidance. But what's interesting about this study, the turnoff is not for all the reasons you might think. No question, the news these days is not uplifting. Now to another grim milestone. Good old-fashioned news fatigue has been around for decades. People tired of a steady drumbeat of depressing stories. But according to a new study, that's not the only thing turning news consumers off these days. There's more. Our election was not stolen, and America has not failed. Turns out politics is the number one reason people are steering clear of news. Also making the list... Mr. Navalny, who's on hunger strike, is said by his lawyer to be seriously ill. A perception that the news lacks relevance. And apparently there's a yearning for the old days when news options were simpler, as people cited too many choices as another reason. And all that, says the study, leads to low news self-efficacy. In other words, people don't know what news source to trust. To feel that you're part of this place, not a visitor. At least not all media is hurting. Netflix has picked up some 10 million subscribers during the pandemic. And their documentaries are doing very well. Yeah, you know, Joanna, I mean, I wonder if news avoidance isn't a fancy way of saying I'd rather watch Netflix. Um, I was surprised <laughs> that, uh, that during the pandemic there wasn't a huge news uptick. I mean, I, I feel like that's all I do or that's all I've been doing for the past year and a half. So, I, I mean, by the way, Stephanie Edgerly has done other studies and news fatigue, of course, comes into it, into play. I mean... A rep, sort of a, a feeling that there's a repetition of stories, but she said that those were not, at this point anyway, the, the number one reasons people are turning out. Well, it's really, the interesting thing to me is how they're defining news and where people, where and how people are consuming and what those, what those outlets are giving them. Because it's not that there isn't enough information to fill 24 hours. There's a lot going on in the world, but that's not necessarily what you get from cable news or social media. Instead, you get the same six stories yeah. rehashed and analyzed ad infinitum, and you're hearing the same voices making the same arguments and kind of bringing politics to the same subject. So that gets exhausting. That's not new information. And so I think maybe if people are, when there were, you know, back in the day, you could get this sort of finite bundle of information. You knew it was at your doorstep in the morning and you knew it was on TV at 6.30 at night or at 11. And it was kind of condensed for you. Now there's both too much and not enough at the same time. I think that's a really good point. We're kind of barraged by it. Um, instead of just watching the evening news and reading the morning paper, you're getting it on push alerts on your phone and app alerts and on social media. There's Twitter. There's the stuff that people talk about. But I thought it was really interesting, the whole too political angle. Yeah. Um, I feel that in a lot of ways, news has been weaponized lately and that that um, certain actors have succeeded in undermining um, the authority of the media. Uh, we don't we kind of have skewed towards infotainment in a lot of ways. And I've said it over and over again. I think that a lot of different news organizations are preaching to their own choirs and offering up a lot of confirmation and not a lot of new information. And I think people are tired of not seeing um, news or not reading news that feels like it actually informs them or changes their worldview or gives them the information they need to navigate the space they're in. I have an example of that, uh, by the way. I just took a long drive from Florida to Massachusetts, and I started listening to the news at the beginning, and I was hearing the same thing over and over again, and I quickly gave up and said, I'm going to listen to a book on tape, and I downloaded John Boehner's uh, <laughs> book, which is hilarious, actually, to have him reading it, uh, and read that and felt that I was actually learning something. And I think that that's a piece of it, too, is, you know, for people like us who are news junkies who want to be consuming, we also want to be learning something all the time and want to feel that, you know, the news is relevant to us uh, as we're, we're getting it. I, I wonder also, you know, with all of the stories that we've had about social justice over the last year, why wasn't there more coverage of different aspects of the American Rescue Plan, which people said was the biggest anti-poverty uh, program in generations, which is such a key part of that story. It affects so many people. And the, the media have, I think, largely ignored it. Yeah, good points all. I'm not sure I even buy the premise of this study, with all due respect to the researcher. She found what she found. But 
Uh, I thought that the ratings for news of all kinds during the election were through the roof. You see that at times of war. Uh, you know, uh, I, I think it's healthy that people aren't in a state of, you know, mainlining news every waking moment, three, you know, a year round. That That's no way to live. Uh, so, uh, look, maybe it is a version of the old saying about how uh, someone who isn't a liberal when they're 20 uh, is, uh, is a jackass, and if they're not a conservative when they're 50, they're a fool. I'm sure I garbled that, but you know the old, <laughs> the old saying. Maybe that's what this is more about, that younger people, if you're mainlining news and you're a younger person, Time to maybe mix up your your lifestyle a little bit, and if you but if you're not paying attention when you're older, and it's about your taxes, your schools, your four hundred one k, then maybe you need to wise up. I'm curious, Jeremy, just about the point on relevance. Though I use the example of Navalny, they didn't necessarily say that, but I mean, I find that just riveting that story. But other people may find it irrelevant, and I'm wondering what relevance means these days. What, I mean, what, 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 what do you speculate? Uh, I think that it, it depends. Uh, I'll think back to when I was a starting uh, journalist in Boston, actually. And I was, I was, you know, 20 years old and I was a writer for WBUR. And every couple of days they would make me write a story that had something to do with Whitey Bulger. And I was like, what does this have to do with my life? Uh, th this is like, I, why don't you tell me, have me write something about the tea. Have me write something about something that actually affects me on a daily basis. There are these stories that we get obsessed with that that then, you know, yeah. don't have relevance, I think, to a lot of people, hmm. even if some for some people they do. Right now, you know, there there are a number of stories that affect a lot of people, but they also don't affect a lot of other people. I, I'm not sure, you know, depends on which story you're talking about. Right.